Hey everybody, Ginger on Wheels here again. So you might have seen my Ninebot Max review, and if you haven't, I'll link that up here now. But I think that the executives at High Boy also saw that video, and they were sitting around thinking, you know, I think my S2 Pro scooter is better than that Ninebot Max. We should send Ginger on Wheels one of those. And they actually did. So we have here today the High Boy S2 Pro and the first for a Ginger on Wheels channel, a scooter with a seat. And this seat is supposed to fit on this scooter. So today we're gonna unbox this scooter and go take it for a ride around the neighborhood. It's gonna be a really fun video. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and get this unboxed. Okay, so I'm gonna start by opening the seat just so I can kind of get that out of the way in case it wasn't obvious already. The seat does come in a separate box. All right, and foam on top. The seat detached from pole. Let's get the box out of there. That's just a foam cut out for the seat. Okay, so it looks like the seat goes on the silver pole and then you just put it in the bottom part of the seat right there. And you can tighten it by tightening these two bolts here. Oops. There's two bolts on either side of the post. But you adjust the height there by unclamping this part and then clamping it back up. And I'm assuming there's a post hole on the scooter for this for me to put this part into. So let's get the scooter open because that's the more important part, right? Okay, so here is the scooter. This is the box that it shipped in. This is the High Boy S2 Pro. Let's go ahead and open it up. Nice clean packaging. I'm noticing scooter companies are getting more and more efficient at packing scooters with lighter foam and less foam to get the same job done. We used to see a lot of damaged scooters, especially coming from companies like Nan Robot. All right. <laughs> okay, so maybe don't do that. Be aware that the scooter is not locked closed. Okay, let me get the box out of the way here. Okay, so as you may or may not know already, this scooter is supposed to compete directly with the Ninebot Max. And it does that on price and features. This scooter, while it might not look like it, does have dual rear suspension. Apparently, I haven't seen it yet. This is the first for you and me. Let's just ruin the whole backdrop while we check it out. This right here is spring suspension. Uh, it's got a kickstand here. I can see there's an LED light bar strip. I didn't know the scooter had LEDs. It's got the same kind of plastic bottom plate that the Ninebot Max scooter has. So if you're really into upgrades, you can replace this with like a stainless steel plate. But what are the things that people complain about on the Ninebot Max the most? I heard a lot of things about the fender and I heard a lot of things about flat tires. And this scooter, it's got solid tires. These are, these are squishier than other solid tires I've seen on other scooters. This tire here, it feels like a bicycle tire when it's really pumped up, but I know that it's not an air-filled tire. This is a solid tire. Other tires are like an actual hard plastic, but this is gonna have the same grip as a pneumatic tire. That's impressive. And then the other thing people complained about on the Ninebot Max was the fender, I think. The fender was breaking off for a lot of people, and this thing has a reinforced fender. This is like actual really hard plastic here. I'm assuming this is a latch so I can actually latch my handlebars. Looks cool too. Um, this is, this is, is this plastic? No, this is metal. This is a metal reinforced fender here. So you're not gonna break that fender off. That's cool. Okay, well, I forgot to mention that this, it does come with the charger, believe it or not. Looks just like a standard charger to me. Okay, so in the box, I did miss this when I opened it up initially. There's a user manual. There's a little happy, not happy. You can leave some feedback. And this is, oh, please email us at us.support at highboy.com for assistance if you have any questions. Oh, there's a little quick start guide, which basically just says plug in the controller into this piece here and then screw in your handlebars. The uh, manual here, not in color, 
but it does look like it has pretty detailed instructions. And it's got a little picture of a scooter, dude. So in the box with the scooter, you'll also get a little bag of tools and it comes with screws. And inside here, there are six screws, but you only need four of them to put the handlebars on. So let's go ahead and do that now. All you do, this is just like most scooters, there's gonna be a, a wire coming from the controller inside the scooter, and then there's gonna be a little wire for the throttle assembly inside the top of the handlebars, and you just plug them into each other. It's click and go, plug and play, boom. Make sure it clicks and it's nice and secured, and then you tuck the wires down into the handlebar. Okay, pause. This is a close-up of the handlebars here. And as you can see, on most scooters, you would just stuff these wires down into the bar and put the handlebars on. But on this scooter, there's this weird little metal thingy hanging, and it's held in by a screw here. And I have no idea what it does, and it's impeding my ability to put the handlebars on. So I'm gonna unscrew it with a little screwdriver right here and just remove it completely, because I don't know what it is. Yeah, if somebody knows what this little metal thingy is, go ahead and comment down below and let us all know. But for now, I'm just gonna take it out. So, like I said before, you just stuff the cables down into here and then put the bar on. Like that. And then we have our screws that are in the bag here and the tools are in there too. And you just put two screws in the back and two screws in the front and you're done. Okay, so I've got my four screws in, two in the front and two in the back. And I noticed while I was screwing it in that it's got a little integrated grocery bag holder here. And it's also got the charging port at the top there, the nice little waterproof cover. Okay, so this is what the display looks like. It's a lot like the Ninebot Max. You can tell they're just trying to one up that scooter in every category. Okay, so let's turn it on and see how much charge the scooter actually comes with. You hold down this button here, oh, turns right on. It's in sport mode out of the box, and it looks like I've got around 70% battery. I do think this thing has an app though, so let's go ahead and download that now. Okay, I just downloaded the app. Let's go ahead and open it up. Allow only while using the app. And did it connect? Oh, it says disconnected. So let's push the Bluetooth button on here, and it found the scooter immediately. Enter password. Default password it says is 888888. So let's do that. Six number eights. Connecting to Bluetooth. Oh, we're connected. And 75% battery. So you can lock and unlock the scooter. It's got a light off and on function. Ooh, it's got some sweet underglow lights. I'm not gonna spoil that now. Scooter details and sport mode, comfort mode. Oh, two modes, sport mode and comfort mode. Of course, you knowing me, I'm gonna go in sport mode. Let's see details. It has battery percent level, speed miles per hour, got the voltage, current in amps, input power and watts. So I guess the thing's got 75% battery. What do you say we strap our helmet on and go for a ride? Okay, so my normal scooter checklist before I take a, any scooter for its maiden voyage, ooh, I get to peel plastic off, is to pump up the tires, but we're not doing that on this scooter because they're solid tires. So on this scooter, what I'm gonna do is Put the seat on, on the deck right here. It has this little cutout in the, in the uh, rubber platform and you can just stick the seat right in there. Okay, so to install the seat, to install the seat, you flip up this little flap on the rubber grip tape here and you put the seat in and then there's a little Allen screw right here that you can see and you tighten that down and it'll expand the little metal piece in there and then it'll make this nice and secure inside your deck. Let's go ahead and get one of the included Allen keys and tighten this down. It looks like it's the biggest Allen screw that it comes with. Oh, got to fold the seat all the way down. Okay, our seat is installed. All we do now is go like this. There's a little latch right here. And then to lock it in place, just like a scooter, you slide the little plastic clip in. All right, I know I didn't show you very well before what the scooter looks like, but here it is. This is a, a flat black deck with little knobblies on it. It's rubber. It's got nice waterproofing uh, grommets here, just like the Ninebot. And it looks like they one up Ninebot on the latch too. Check this thing out. You slide this thing up to open it and then you can fold that down. 
but you don't have to do anything else other than just push it in and it clicks. It's beautiful. Okay, never ridden a scooter with a seat before. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Very cool. I'm in sport mode, right? Yeah, okay, I'm in sport mode. 20 miles an hour? That can't be right. I'm getting out the speedometer. Is that right? 20 miles an hour? Can't be right. No way. All right, I downloaded a little speedometer app because I don't trust the one on the scooter. And sure enough, it's discrepant by about two miles an hour pretty consistently. Okay, so scooter says 20 miles an hour, speedometer says 18, which is still pretty impressive, not gonna lie. Oh, we got cruise control. I just noticed cruise control activated on the scooter. I can tell you, I can't really tell that there's rear suspension. Maybe if I hit a big bump, let's try this. Well, I guess, yeah, you know. Yeah, those solid tires, you can really feel the fact that they're solid. No air in there. Okay, if you bounce on the rear of the scooter, you can tell that there's suspension. That's crazy for a scooter of this price range. Yeah, these tires are really interesting. They have the rubbery, sticky grip that a normal pneumatic tire would have. And it doesn't have that like sliding plastic texture. It's like a hard plastic texture. If you ever rode a big wheel when you were a kid that had those plastic wheels and they're like really hard plastic, you know what I'm talking about. That's the kind of hard plastic tires that are on normal scooters, but this is like rubber. So that's cool, it's a first. This is a nice, this is a solid hill. This scooter just made it up 350 watts. Okay, so this scooter, the High Boy S2 Pro, weighs 36.3 pounds, so it's actually lighter than the 9Bot Max. The max load is 260 pounds, so more than the 9Bot Max. The max speed was 19 miles per hour, according to the manufacturer. And I think back there we just got 18 miles per hour, which is still just as fast as the 9 Bot Max. It has a 350 watt brushless motor, but it felt like it had more torque up the hills that I just took it up. I'm definitely gonna have to test that. Battery is 36 volt, 11.4 amp hour, and it charges in six hours with the uh, charge port that's actually up top here. The tires on it are 10 inch solid tires, but they feel like pneumatic tires. This is like a, a grippy rubber. That's a, an actual first for me on scooters. This is really cool. It's got a nice functional kickstand too. This thing actually works. It's not like the scooter doesn't fall over by itself. Things I like most about the scooter are the fact that the fender is reinforced. I don't have to listen to that clacking and rattling around on anything. The uh, rear suspension really makes it nice when you're seated because most of your weight is gonna be on the rear of the scooter. And at first when I was riding this thing around, I thought the springs might be a little stiff, but when you're seated, that's when the springs shine. So you're not gonna get a sore butt seating, sitting down. It's also got the solid tires, which have the same grip as pneumatic tires, but you're not gonna have to deal with flat tires ever. Um, one other thing I like about it that I you'd never really think about is that the brakes, it's got two brakes. It's got the electronic brake and the disc brake, and they work completely independently of each other. On the 9Bot, when you pull the brake lever, it activates the front drum brake and the electronic brake. But on this one, you, get an, you can choose. You can use just the rear disc brake, or you can use the electronic brake. So that's cool. Well, all in all, I'd say this is definitely a solid scooter. I'm excited to test it and see how it compares to the 9Bot Max, but out of the box, I can tell you just between the price difference and the amount of, I can't tell the difference between the two scooters, I'm gonna say first impressions are that this one's better. Sorry, 9Bot. This could be one of those scooters that just gives up after 100 miles. We're definitely gonna have to put this thing through the full Ginger on Wheels paces so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and you can catch all the range testing and full reviews I'm gonna do on this scooter. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time.